Welcome to the Welsh Woodman Workshop and in tonight's project we're going to be turning a bowl from this large piece of alder. So this should be an interesting turn as I saw this tree being felled yesterday so this is very green and as a thank you to the tree surgeon who allowed me to take a few logs I'm going to turn this into a bowl for him. So I'm going to bring him over, oh, heavy piece of thing, quite big so we should be able to get a nice big bowl out of this. Hope you enjoy. So in order to manage with this and make it easier to turn, we're going to be cutting this into the rounds on the bandsaw. Now because this was cut in the summer, even though the tree was dead, we've still got that cambrium sort of layer there, so it's going to probably lose its bark. So we're going to do a non-natural edge bowl. In order to help us cut this out on the bandsaw, I've got a plywood template. I'm just going to centre and screw into place. My bandsaw blade then is going to cut around the outside of this profile. So I got and cut out roughly into the round. Now I need to change over my blade because this alder is really tough. The blade's pretty much blunt on my bandsaw now. So I'm just going to have to do the rest by hand. So I'm going to put the face plate on and I'm going to be whacking in some long wood screws. So I've got it mounted and spinning now on the VB36. And we're going to be using a bowl gouge with a swept back grind just to form the outside shape with this. We'll put a tenon on it, then we'll flip them round to turn the inside. Good turning tip then, when you're coming to roughing out a bowl or any sort of turning, really try and keep the tool as close to your body as possible. So that gives it more stability compared to holding the tool far away from your body and you're just depending on your arm. So try and move with the tool. A lot of turners have developed this sort of bump in the front there just to make it more comfortable to turn. <laughs> Good, so this is a tough old bit of wood to, to turn. Uh, tools are a bit blunt now, so I'm gonna have to resharpen. Yeah, interesting. So if you have a nice bit of grain pattern in there, I reckon. Oh, you've got to love green wood to it, you? Look at this. Lovely stuff. Going to be using a pair of dividers then just to give us our mortise so by mortise i mean i'm going to be cutting a little hole in here expanding these jaws into that hole and that should give us a really strong sturdy grip so when you're using a pair of dividers to mark us on a mortise make sure that only one point touches if you touch with two points it's going to flip round probably jump and jab you which <laughs> don't ask me how i know that with one point and it's a good idea to sharpen these regularly as well just to make it easier to make a mark. I'm going to be using a parting tool then to part down. Now before I turn anything round the other way I always mount my jaws on to make sure I've got a really good strong grip. So I'm just going to do, sharpen my tools, do some finishing cuts over the top, just redefine really the, the profile of this. Might even try and put a little foot in if I have enough room, just to make this look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So if you're working with green wood, it's a good idea to put an undercut onto the bottom of the bowl. So it's angled inwards in towards the centre. And what that will do is the bowl moves as it dries, the moisture content changes, It'll prevent the bowl from rocking on the table as it'll always have sort of three points of contact. When you come to cutting, avoid purely looking at the tip of the tool as you, you're cutting your profile. What you should be looking at is the top profile along here. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So if we keep an eye on the top profile, we can show you how well you're cutting.
and that's going to give you a far more pleasing shape eventually rather than just looking at the tip and redefining that shape all along so it gives you the profile of the bow so we've got the outside profile all turned out now quite happy with the shape so we're going to flip him round and turn the inside of the bow when you come to recentering a bow blank put your finger right in the middle and push and that tends to help centralize it quite a lot so you can tighten down on your jaws then I'm going to turn the center of the bowl out i'm going to be keeping about half an inch to an inch wall thickness as long as it's even throughout and that'll help the the whole bowl dry at an e equal sort of speed and that will reduce the amount of warps that we're going to get in the bowl so i'm going to true up the face You really feel the moisture coming off this, almost like having a shower. Brilliant. That's it, the edge is all running through now, which is good. And the outside is pretty true as well to the piece. So quite happy with the, the mountain. So when you're turning, if you go past the centre point, what tends to happen is the tool catch, bring it round and smash it back. So in order to avoid that, what we can actually do is drill out this central hole. And you can use your gouges to do this. So you just need to put the, the candle sort of up and down. Up and down. And you can push in straight there. And you let see the material coming out and what will happen then as you turn into the center that center point you're not going to get a catch because it's removed so we're going to do that down to our required depth now it's the fun bit I'm going to turn away the center now there's a debate amongst wood turners whether you should leave the center in first and work away from the edge because the central support or work from the center outwards so I'm just going to do it one of the ways today absolutely love turning greenwood and it's just a pleasure because it's so much easier to turn number one number two these long string streams that are now covering my entire workshop are amazing so what i'm going to do is i've got my depth stop here now it's important we're using these depth stops otherwise we end up with something that looks like a lampshade instead <laughs> i've already got enough of them so it's going to set that to the required depth we're going to need which is there and I've got about half an inch to go until that bottoms out which is ideal because that's give me enough room for my mortise at the bottom and coincides nicely with the thickness of the wall so just going to turn down to that depth So I'm just feeling my fingers, using my hands as calipers. I've got a really good even more thickness throughout there. Tiny bit high on the bottom, so we're going to just do a one more cut there to, to solve that. You see the aftermath after turning the green bowl, <laughs> absolutely shavings everywhere. It's all part of the fun. 
So thoroughly enjoyed tinning this bolt, love tinning green wood. And here's the finished piece, uh, well, green piece, I should say. So even more thickness throughout. So I'm intending to see this moving as the, the water evaporates from the piece. And that can sometimes be the beauty of the wood. And because I've undercut the bottom of this, I could decide whether I want to just keep it green with it all warped or to return it because I've left enough thickness in the wall. Now the wall thickness itself is an equal thickness throughout and that should help sort of control the drying process evenly throughout the bowl so you're more likely to get a uniform bowl in the end. Now what I'm going to do is cling film around the outside of this and allow water to evaporate in and I've always had good results with that in the past. What I've also done in the past is put some paint or even glue on the end grains and that sort of controls the drying out process. So thoroughly happy with this. Hope the tree surgeon would be happy with this as well after it's all dried out. So thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed tonight's project, please consider subscribing as it really helps me out. And then I can get some more wood turning and woodworking videos your way. Hope you have a great night. Jochen Vaur, no star.